what's up survivors welcome back to another beginner guides episode okay so in this episode um i know i cut the last episode a little short um i wanted to put more stuff in it but i felt like that if i put too much in it it just would have been too much information for one episode um so in this episode i want to cover the clan stuff as well as the weapon and armor enhancements as well as repairing and stuff like that okay um all right so to start off uh, we're going to cover the clan stuff that was added with the Age of War. Alright, so let me actually grab some silk. Because um, I've got some silk here. Now I am making this episode back to back um, from my last episode. Um, specifically the uh, the one I was talking about. Uh, um, the fishing and all that other stuff. Um, I took a little bit of a break and I came back and decided to do this one as a separate episode. So, yeah. So, in this one, we're going to talk about clan stuff. Now, we already talked about the clan emblem bench in a previous episode. So, we're not going to cover that. We're going to go into decorations. We're going to talk about the clan stuff and decorations. So, first and foremost, you have two types of clan banners that you can place. You have the standing banner and the wall banner. So I'm going to grab uh, about a half of those branches here, and then we're going to come outside. The decorations clan, and we're going to do the clan standing banner. Now, as you guys can see, it does have a specific way it can be placed. So we can place it however you guys want, and the banner will face a specific way. But I'm going to take it, and I'm going to place it right here in front of this. Probably have to back up a little bit. We're going to place that and then you have your clan banner so you can kind of place it in an area close to by your base just to kind of decorate it a little bit as you can see it is double-sided so you can have it facing um either way so you can i can come over here and uh theoretically i should be able to place it right here but of course because of the elevation it's going to be funky so we're just going to place it there and voila we now have two full standing clan banners and then you have your um you have your hanging one that you can hang on walls and stuff now of course i don't have a place to hang it over here it's probably not going to let me hang it there obviously it won't let me hang on a tree or on a normal wall will it Yep, doesn't let you do that. So you kind of have to have at least a too high wall to do this. Or at least a high foundation with a wall above it. So let's go to the back of the house and see if it'll let me place it back here. Yeah, it will let me place back here. So we'll just hang it right there. And as you can see, uh, that is your hanging wall banner. You can hang it up anywhere as long as you have a nice either elevated foundation or you have a too high wall. And that's pretty much it. And those, of course, take 30 silk and 20 branches to make um, either of these. They take the same amount. Okay. So now the next thing I want to talk about is the big thing. Now, this is the treasure system. This is basically this whole circle right here. As you guys can see, there's a circle like a line off in the distance. Um Anything that you want to count towards your treasure system has to be placed within within inside his um, his radius. So you have a large area that you can place it. So if you have a big base, you can pretty much place it anywhere. Um, but over here, I want to go. I don't think I've been making um, these. So I'm just going to make um, a couple of them real quick. As you can see, even with times 10 crafting, these things take a while to make. Now you can't. You can only have one of these placed within a certain radius. So more than one of these is kind of pointless to have. But I mean, I guess if you have a large base that and you want them on, you want lots of treasures decorating your base, you could have multiples of these guys um, littering around. But I don't really see the point um, because of the way the treasure system will work in Age of War. Now we're... We're still under a little bit of a, a speculation as to how the rating system will work, like how they will target your treasure room, your vaults, and stuff like that. So we're just going to come in here, and I'm just going to place him right there. 
and then we're going to put away our tool and as you can see you get yourself a nice little treasure hunter guy with a vault and if you come up to him and talk to him he'll show you all the treasures you have their value and the total value and you can also come up here and just deposit stuff obviously you can't deposit this treasure in here but i can come down here place it there and do this and then as you can see now my treasure area lights up because this is considered a treasure and anywhere where you see these little swirly marks at least there until i go boop and then as soon as i walk back in range so as soon as i pull it out it disappears but as soon as i get in range of the treasure boundary it opens back up and it only so if i placed it over here it wouldn't add towards my treasure but i can still place it but if i place it over here it will add towards my treasure now this is where the system gets a little funky okay as far as we're aware the treasure system is or should i say the rating system is an opt-in opt-out function now how does that work what does that mean of course this is speculation still but what i think it means is you can still place treasures you can still go out and gather your treasures and place them okay but if you actually have that npc that box down okay that counts as a treasure i believe he it he that guy okay that npc slash treasure box is the opt-in opt-out feature because i can just place the treasure there it is done but it doesn't count towards my treasure because it's not within treasure limit so technically i'm not a target so I believe how it's going to work. And now this is still speculation because chapter three is still way off from now. We're still only on chapter one as the making of this video. Okay. I mean, it just started recently. Um, I believe he is what is what makes it the opt-in opt-out feature. So if I was to place this in range, so I'm just going to leave it there for now. Okay. So you guys can see that this treasure is placed right here. So he shouldn't be recording this. Yeah. It doesn't even say that it's in here and I have nothing in here. Oh, sorry about that guys had a cough. But if I come back over here and I pick this up and I place it within within his circle. So let's just place it right there. And now I talk to him. Now it's saying I have treasure, a 90 of value. A value of 90 because that is within which means now i am a target of the purge for age of war okay the specific one where the uh strategian army will attack your base and try to take your treasure um and as far as we're aware it ain't gonna be pretty like they're gonna be attacking you with catapult or ballistas or whatever i don't know they're they're apparently it's just our trebuchets i think is what they said it was like they're supposed to set up like trebuchets and you know they'll be attacking you from like range and you'll have to destroy the trebuchets or they'll destroy your walls and all kinds of stuff like if you're going to do like the treasure system with the vault the actual setup you're gonna have to build a base in a way where it is defendable like you're going to have to defend up against waves of strategian um army like militiamen or whatever as well as you're gonna have to go out and destroy you know trebuchets and stuff at least that's how we understand it or no technically that's coming in chapter two sorry i misspoke i apologize i misspoke the rating comes in chapter two because that no 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 it does come in chapter three never mind um the new the new i'm um, hold up i gotta get my information right here before i fuck you guys up chapter two is going to be the new purge system but i don't think the satijans will attack us then i think that's only in chapter three i think i i know for a fact that chapter three is when they officially have their base built on the map which is located if my speculations are correct it's this plateau right here it used to be a um an npc camp here and they're building a fortress here now and how do i know that they're building a fortress here well for one there's something being constructed here right now in chapter one 
But the biggest giveaway is the battle pass. That's the fortress right there. This is the old ruined camp because you can see it in the background. That's that plateau. That's what's being built there. This is obviously my my speculation and my guess. But this is that area just outside of the savannah where this camp was. And this is being built on that plateau where that camp used to be. So I'm I'm speculating that this this uh, tapestry right here um, for the last part from 50 or from 45 to 60 is the strategic base military base that's going to be getting built out there. So that's, of course, my speculation. But anyway, sorry, so I'm, I'm going to stop beating around the bush with that. That's just my guess. Um, <clears throat> so that's how the treasure system works. And when you get anything like coins or stuff like that or gold bars or silver bars or silver coins, gold coins, you can place them in here and they will also be added towards your total as well. Um, and things like that. OK, so. Uh, and you can find all kinds of treasures from stuff that you can find in boxes or from enemies that drop them and stuff like that, as well as you can actually find large treasures and stuff like that, like out in the field and enemy camps and all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you're keeping your eyes out for any type of thing that might look out of place, like not natural, like it looks like a treasure box or a statue of something or like you know like an instrument or something like that just keep your eyes out while you're you know going through camps and stuff because you might just find yourself a treasure as well as in boxes and on enemy loots because apparently enemies can drop rare loots as well too rare treasures as well um <clears throat> so keep your keep your eye out for that uh yeah oh also um in the last patch they patched the sorcerer skulls they now have a use of course, they don't count as treasure, but they do, they, 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 they can be placed now. So you can place sorcerer skulls. So you can decorate your base or your sorcery area with uh, skulls of the sorcerers that you've killed. So yeah, you can do that as well. But anyways, <laughs> I want to get into, I want to dive into, let me, uh, Grab that. We are going to go now into crafting stations. Um, where is it? Ah, the Tinker's Bench. So we're going to need 25 ingots and 100 wood. So we're going to come over here. I'm going to grab 25 ingots. And then we're going to come over here to this and grab 100 wood. There we go. So we can put down the Tinker's Bench, which I don't have a whole lot of room for in here. But you want to know what? We'll just stick the Tinker Bench in our room for now. And we'll just shove it like right back here a little bit. Right there. Perfect enough, right? Good enough for me. So the Tinker's Bench. What does the Tinker's Bench do? Well, the Tinker's Bench allows you to add modifications to your armor, weapons, and tools. Okay, so <clears throat> to dive into these, they're really self-explanatory. The game does a really good job of telling you what each of them does. So you've got this one right here, which is the armor kit, which removes um, a significant amount of weight. Then you have the armor repair kit. If you learn the armor one, you can make a repair kit for your road, like on the road, so you can repair your armors on the road. Now, it doesn't repair them to full, but it does give them a nice boost. Next, you have the blade modification, which takes stone and oil. This reduces the weight of a weapon. The armor flexibility kit, which um, makes armor plating more flex and more flexible. I believe that's the durability one. Then you have a simple armor repair kit. Over here, you have this simple blunt weapon fitting. This allows your weapons to have more concussive damage. So, you know, if you want to make your truncheons have more concussive damage, you would put this on them. Simple refinement kit increases weapons and armor durability. Then you have the simple tool upgrade kit, which uh, up the upgrade kit reduces the durability, but increases the efficiency. So basically you get more resources 
Um, it's not a whole lot more, but it is significant enough to notice. Then you have the weapon re the weapon um, damage kit, which takes five oil and in ingots for this. This increases the damage of your weapon. Then you have the simple weapon <clears throat> repair kit. Then you have the thin armor plating, which increases. Excuse me, hold on. All right, sorry about that. Had a bubble in my throat or something. I can't drink a water. Um, then you have the thin armor plating, which increases the strength of your armor, makes it gives you more armor basically. And then you have the normal weapon repair kit, which takes 23 ingots, and you can you know it repairs up to a certain tier. Um, the repair kits only repair up to a certain type of armor, a certain tier of armor as well. So you can use higher kits on lower armor, but you can't use lower kits on higher armor. Basically, that's how that works. So for shits and giggles, let's uh, let's do this one right here because um, I don't have enough oil to make the damage kit. Actually, I do have enough oil to do that. So let's actually do that real quick. Um, something you have to keep in mind. Anytime you want to um, modify something like a weapon or an armor, you do have to repair it. So make sure that you do throw it in a bench to do a quick repair. Um, I know it sucks, but you do have to do that. And then we do have a truncheon that is at full. So we'll just actually they both are. So they should be fine. Um, now let me come grab the oil. Oh, I think it's outside of the fishing area. Let me go get that real quick. Uh, and then we'll come down here. And then we'll grab all those fish that we just got in the last one. Yep, they are all in here. We'll throw all these in here to get some more oil. There we go. We'll do that. And then we'll grab some more of these bugs so we can get, as you guys can see here, the process is just, it's amazing. It works so well. And then we'll come down here. As you can see, a stack is 50. So we'll throw that in there. And then we'll come to this one and throw those 23 in there. And then we'll come back and grab more. Do, do, do. And then we'll bring the oil that we have inside. Come around here. Throw the oil into our bench. Oh, we forgot to grab some ingots. Let's do that real quick. Um, let's just grab... Um, let's just grab 200 of... I hate it when I'm holding the button down and it doesn't even do it. So let's just grab 200 for now. That should be more than enough. All right. So we'll throw that in there. Um, so we're going to make um, one, two of these. And then we'll just take those in our inventory and we'll place them. As you can see, now it has the purple background, which means it was modified. And then I will show you guys the simple weapon one. So we'll make that real quick. So as you can see, this axe right here, which is the event axe or the battle pass uh, one handed axe that you get from the current battle pass for uh, Art of or Age of War. Um, it has 450 durability and 15 damage. OK, so if I take this and I put it over top of that and then I click back on it again, still has 450 durability. But now it has 17 damage instead of 15 damage. So and now it has a purple background because it's been modified. And that's how that works. And then we'll just make another one for our thrall. So our thrall can get an increased one. And then, of course, you need if I wanted to increase my armor's durability, I would need fiber and twine. And it's the same concept. So, you know, I would go in here i'd have to go repair all my armor and then I'd have to make five thin armor kits and then put them on there. So that brings me to another thing what happens when you <clears throat> let's say you get the ability to make better modifications better enhancement pieces like you know maybe i can make advanced you know armor kits or advanced weapon damage kits well can i still use it on that same weapon that's already been modified no you cannot you have to get an all new weapon so if you get a legendary weapon and you use a simple damage kit on it and then you want to turn around and use like an advanced damage weapon kit on it, you would have to go get an all new legendary weapon. You can't just swap out the, the modification. It will not allow you. That is the biggest drawback. 
Now, the good news is eventually, if you're using the weapon yourself, the durability will drop to the point after a certain amount of repairs that the item will just be completely useless. And in that case, you just throw it into your dismantling bench, dismantle it, get the resources out of it. And then the next time you get a new one, or if you make a new weapon, you can put the new modification on it. Same thing with the armor. So hopefully that answers that question if anybody was thinking that, because obviously you could get better modifications. You do need an all new piece of gear or tool or weapon to modify it to make it better. So now with tools. So <clears throat> with tools, I highly recommend using the efficiency one. This is my personal preference just because farming is so important. So I'm going to take that, repair my pickaxe. Now, I know some people will be like, oh, raise the durability. Well, I mean, yeah, you could. You could You could do whatever you want. You can, if you want to, you can raise the durability. You can go get the, uh, where is it now? Where's the durability one at? That's armor. That's weight. Where's, where's is this the durability? One? Okay, yeah, this is the durability one right here. So, yeah, you can use this one to increase the durability of your tools. But I highly recommend doing this one right here, the upgrade one, which increases the efficiency of your tools, which just makes them farm better. So you just go in here. There you go. Now it just makes it more efficient. So now it can farm better. Of course, like I said, every single one of your tools has to be at full. Otherwise, you cannot use the modifier. So I'll just make two more here real quick, and then I will... That'll give me enough to modify all of my tools, but then I have to go in here. And just to show you, just because somebody's probably going to say, well, show us. Okay, well, there it is. It's not at full. Can't do it. It just swaps it. Okay. It has to be at full durability, so you do have to go repair it. So we'll just go in here and hit repair. Repair. Repair, repair, now all of our tools are more efficient, they do a better job at gathering resources for us. And there you go, we've got a modified weapon, I do need to make another one for this here, so I guess I'll repair that and go do that. And the whole reason why this background is kind of like that orangish yellow, it's just because that's the color for that specific weapon um for the the dlc oh i need more um more oil but yeah but anyways so that's how weapon and armor and tool modification works obviously i didn't show the armor one but i'm pretty sure by now you kind of understand the process it's the same as weapons and tools you just have to make sure it's at full durability then you just craft the correct armor modification that you want there is no wrong answer I mean, my personal preference is armor plating for your armor, damage for your weapons, and efficiency for your tools. That's just my personal preference. But if you have something else that you would like to do, feel free just to do it the way you want. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, hopefully um, the treasure system makes a little bit more sense now if you were curious about where you get them it is completely random if you want to get like the drops like this thing right here which just drops out of a chest or off of npcs um, but sometimes you can find rare loots around the map and stuff like that which is pretty cool so make sure you're keeping your eyes out for those as well Whew. covered a lot of stuff today um, between this guide and the last one which i like i said i'm doing them back to back so that pretty much covers a lot of the stuff that I wanted to cover for today. Hopefully this guide and the last one were informational enough for you guys. I do want to start going out and um, doing a little bit more. I'm probably going to go and try to get my hands on maybe a couple of uh, more crafters so we can get this base up and running a little bit more. Eventually we are going to move. Um, I'm not going to stay here. I will leave the base here, but we're going to move probably more central. <clears throat> haven't really decided i'm thinking like maybe in this area of the map so we can be more central to all the different places and then start going out and doing stuff like that but anyways guys please let me know down below what you guys think was this informational would you like me to do in the future a more in-depth guide into explaining things about where you could find certain treasures 
or you know the benefits of armor platings and things like that or whatever you guys would like to see or maybe i haven't done something yet that you guys want me to do um i am planning on uh, leveling her up a little bit more as well as myself moving into getting her heavy armor so we're probably going to cover um heavy armor in the next episode or in the next few episodes so we're going to start moving to um tougher places and i'll teach you guys how to make heavy armor and things like that um and then possibly do the first story dungeon to show you guys that and then move on from there to more places and try to get as much as we can as quickly as possible i am by the way still working on my um online series like i have an actual hardcore uh series that i am doing for age of war on my official server on not my official server but on my private server um it is open to the public um i don't ask anybody to have to you know donate or be a patron or anything crazy like that I, it is open to the public you just have to let me know um and then i can you know either send you a password or i'll just keep it unlocked i haven't really decided yet um but I do allow people to join it. That's not really a big deal. All I ask is everybody to be respectful of each other and respectful of each other's stuff and try not to be a troll and things like that. So if that's something you guys would like to try out and you're looking for something a little bit more hardcore, that's a little bit more of a challenge. Um, it is a modded server, so there will be mods on the server. Of course, the game will automatically download those mods for you. So you don't need to worry about understanding that whole concept. It is on PC. So you will have to have access to the PC servers in order to play on the server. Sorry for you PlayStation 4 guys out there or 5. You will not be able to access it or Xbox to some extent. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. As always, have a good one. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And I will see you guys in the next informational fun beginner guide playthrough. All right, guys, take care. See you later. Bye-bye.